Our demonstration artist today is first and foremost a plein air painter. And for the uninitiated, the term en plein air is a French term which simply means painting outdoors. David loves to paint in outdoor settings to be able to capture the light, the mood, and the spontaneity of a scene. I've watched him demonstrate outdoors, painting a street scene in Pleasanton, which he's done from the Harrington Gallery there. And he's quick to put in people and even telephone wires. Uh, David says he likes painting outdoors because it's unpredictable and it lends itself to a kind of spontaneity that you just can't get in a studio. Painting outdoors requires both Adapt adaptability and speed. While David is mostly a self-taught painter, having 30 years as a practicing architect has given him a strong, confident sense of perspective that translates into his artwork. David deftly renders people, crosswalks, and buildings with ease. And I think his spur of the moment decisions about what to leave out of a painting are just as important as the decisions on what to put in. Above all, David hopes to capture the feeling of a place or scene, its energy, atmosphere, and mood. David is a native Californian and calls the Bay Area his home. David particularly likes to teach travel sketching which he will be doing uh, in his upcoming workshop. He says that when he looks at one of his paintings, he feels the energy of the scene like he was there yesterday. And he likes to be able to impart that kind of feeling to others viewing Does that make any difference? Sure. Tonight, oh, I hope we can all that. learn more about painting scenes that capture the feeling of a place using a variety of controlled marks and loose marks that work together in harmony, just like David does. David, I'd like to uh, welcome you and uh, let you start your demonstration. Okay, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? I am. Uh, We're ready. Thanks, Michelle and, and uh, Joe and Pat and Michael and Donna and all um, for um, your work at CWA. And um, uh, I know how hard that job could be. Um, I was on the board for a, a number of years and uh, my hat's off to you for uh, taking us through this time when we have COVID and, and still being able to present programs like this. So um, I'm, I'm excited to be here and wanna share some things with everybody. So, um, I want to make sure that uh, you see the my screen, and up in the upper left is a um, a scene from Venice, and I, it was like I was there yesterday, but I wasn't. Um, I wish I was, but we have a photo that we're gonna uh, do a drawing from, and also put some paint to it. So we'll do a little sketch of that, and I'm gonna show you a few. Uh, now that we're out of COVID, I hopefully you could get out and do some traveling. So um, here's a hand size sketchbook here. Got my pens right here. Um, this is uh, about 100 pound and it's like a cold press. It's very soft kind of paper. These are the kinds of things I do when I'm uh, out traveling and um, Sometimes I finish, sometimes I don't. It's okay. I'm just trying to capture these scenes. Very spontaneous. So do you Here's have a... one uh, one journal per trip usually? Uh, no, although I did do one um, when I had a few weeks. I did plain air painting and was able to do a number of sketches to try to, my goal was to complete a sketchbook. And uh, that's this other one over here. I'll show it to you real quick, but inside Grace Cathedral, um, choir of the men and boys. So 
the kinds of things I'm doing, I'm not so much journaling as I am. I was um, muted, but I unmuted it. Okay. Um, so most of these are on location, as you say, as you said, and um, here's the last show of uh, Beach Beach Blanket Babylon. Um, and trying to do this in the dark, that was really hard to do. <laughs> Uh, Hamilton in the dark also, and the part of journaling I, I put in is just like my country, young, scrappy, and hungry. Um, I had some of the cast members even sign the, the sketch. So those kind of memories are the things that I cherish when I'm traveling, and I'm sure you will too. So this Love one. it. What a great idea. Yeah. And what kind of sketchbook do you use? Now I'm using this one. This is um, got Fabriano uh, watercolor paper. This is 140 pound cold press paper. So the book is made by Fabriano or do you have to put the books uh, together yourself? This one is the perfect sketchbook. All right. Yeah, you might, I don't know if it's available anymore. This, they had limited run and I bought, uh, I bought some. Um, I know it's hard to find good quality sketchbooks. This, uh, I love this paper. So, so when we went, we were in uh, Paris, the view from the Eiffel Tower kind of thing inside. Uh, let's see. Some things from the museum. And then on to Greece. Mm. You know, I did this whole, I was able to fill up the sketchbook and do plein air painting because um, I was on a tour with other artists. So uh, we went from island to island and, you know, got through this. So this is the kind of things that I do. Not so much writing about it, but I do um, like to do the drawing part of it and sit down and take my time and uh, record my image you know the basically what it is it's your impressions you know your visual impressions of the place um I don't think I've seen him yeah. Yeah. yeah so oftentimes you know there's a connection that you make when you're seeing a scene and that's the things that i'm looking for things that i connect with so um I know journaling uses words and images, uh, but sketching is is primarily the images. And so I, I do like to draw. And so those are the kinds of things that I like to do when I'm traveling. Um, talk a little about the equipment that we're gonna use tonight. There's so much stuff out there right now, but try to keep it simple. Some uh, permanent black ink pens. I have different sizes different nibs and that sort of thing. Um, and in terms of these, just make sure it's portable and bring an extra one because you're going to always run out of ink. But the good thing is um, there's art stores all over the all over the world, you know, and um, I always stop in at an art store whether I need something or not. I'm going to go in there and check the local stuff out. And so uh, <laughs> I bought this nice little brush. It's a travel brush. I bought this in France and it's, it's really cool. It's, um, wow, that looks cool. Yeah, so this is all we need. Mm. Uh, there's, you know, metal pallets that fold like this. The brushes are sort of personal. You could use, you know, different kind of brushes. Uh, this one is um, a travel brush has its own cap. Right. Um, another small palette here. Now these kinds you could put in your purse with a couple of pens and maybe a water brush and you're all set and you're ready to go. So <clears throat> You know, water container, paper towels, and a little travel bag to put all this in. And 
uh, you got your, you know, your go kit for painting. Um, so I'm curious because uh, I see a lot of fine artists using metal palettes. Uh, is a plastic palette just as good or is there some reason you would prefer metal? Um, they're just as good. Um, the best one is, it's the one that you use, not just because you buy it, because it looks nice, but it's because you use it. So that's okay. my advice. Get it, but use it. Okay. And then, you know, some paper towels and you're all set. Put it in a little bag and whatever kind of travel bag. I'm going to go into more depth about this kind of thing when uh, during the workshop. So if you have questions about, you know, um, paint or equipment or what to take with you, so we're going to discuss all of that during the workshop. What about a pencil? Do you, do you not use a pencil? You just start right in with ink? Um, I do use a pencil. Like tonight, I'm going to show you how I do it. But it's, I use very little pencil. It's something to sort of block things out. And okay. then I come in with the detail out with the ink pen. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to do some freehand drawing. And I do use this pen to block things out and then come back in with the uh, marker. So we'll do uh, this paint along with you. So if you have some materials you wanna get and draw and paint along with me, um, please do. I'm not gonna actually stop and wait for you. I'm just gonna go ahead and do things um, and try to get this done. Uh, by... And it will remind people that um... We will have the video of your demo on uh, our CWA YouTube channel uh, okay. in a few days. So uh, if for some reason they missed part of it or can't keep up, they can always check back with that. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna do the drawing part and then we'll take a, a, a small uh, break and then I'll come back and finish the painting of the sketch. So. And if we have time, I'd like to see the work that you come up with as well. So uh, I do have a sketchbook here. Out of way, move that out. There we go. Let me move this out of the way. Sort of get ready for the drawing part here. So this scene here is is things that you know on the Grand Canal here. And what I liked about this was the the, the the shapes up in the sky area uh, and how those buildings hit the sky and then um of course the, the water and water is a little tricky to to uh to render so i'm going to show some techniques on how to do that very quickly so um again this is a rectangle i'm going to divide it up roughly into thirds just so I um, know where things go. I'm also putting some yellow uh, post-it notes here that I'm gonna use where I'm gonna put my, uh, my uh, journaling. I'm gonna put a label here or something later, but I'll keep these in place. I'm gonna sort of paint right over them, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, use the post-it notes to Hold, it's like a placeholder for what you want to journal. You yeah, can I like put that. these almost anywhere. You could put them up in the corners or. So I'm going to start with the horizon line and uh, where this figure is going to go is probably somewhere in here. I'm going to do it at thirds. Make this horizon line. I'm going to put in just really lightly the horizon line you can see what I'm doing there and about one third over, I'm gonna start this figure in the gondola. Here I'm using a fine tip sketching pen here.
Looks like there's somebody sitting in this gondola there. Okay, so. He's got a passenger. Yeah, passenger. Maybe we'll put somebody else in the, there's somebody in a, else in the seat facing them. So behind him, you could see that there's some boats in the water. I'm going to go ahead and do this horizon line profile. There's another little boat out here. There's another gondola over here. So that's basically the foreground. It's, of course, it's going to have um, some waves. And I'm looking at this photograph. And I'm going to imitate some of the waves and just indicate. So when I'm in the foreground, I'm going to use a heavier line here. I'm going to change pens and. These are the two pens I'm using. One's fine and one's a little medium. And you take the medium one and put in a little thicker lines here for some of these waves. As you recede in the distance here, these lines are going to get not as thick. And you're just going to suggest them, just a few of them, but they're not, they're not as thick as, say, these here. So you have thicker ones here, thinner lines, and smaller here just to indicate those. Then I'm going to start on the profile of the buildings that are in the, in the background and the church. So the church, Santa Maria de, de la Salute, right here. I'm in a spot where the, the spires of these churches are. One's probably about here and another one probably over here. So those are the tops of the spires of those churches there. And then the dome probably somewhere I want to say probably in here and then there's a few more statues over here and then the front of the church I'm just going to block out the large shapes here So the highest dome, you've got it hitting right about a third of the way across. The yeah, that, second. like if I was to do a third line, it's probably like in here. Okay. 
and another one through here. But right now, what I'm trying to do is sort of get the, the profile of the skyline. We got another building in here. So continuing with the profile. Up here, I got another. So as you can see, I have the basic profile of where the sky and the earth meet or the sky and the buildings meet. You could do this with landscaping, trees, uh, buildings, um, looking for the shape here or profile. That's what um, I'm trying to block in right now. And it's a way to quickly sort of get these these shapes in here. Um, of course, this is half round and stay with these rectangular kind of shapes here. There's a shape, another rectangle here. About that's there. I see some dark windows here, just as a reference. Yes. Okay. So now I'm going to put in these other buildings starting from the left. Basic shape there. And then pretty dark line for the uh, peer, uh, the uh, these peers. So, what brand of marker is that that you use? This is a Stedler pen. And okay. This, yeah. Yes, Stadler, S T A D L E R. Correct. Okay. D T L E R. S T A D T L E R. All right. Yeah. Now, if you look at this sketch or the, the photograph, there's areas uh, that are the sunlight's hitting them and then the shadow side. On the shadow side, um, 
I try to I stay away from detail on the shadow side. Say for example, um, the building right about there, straight up from where my pen is. Yes. The side of the building, it's like this. It's got a, here's the side of the building. And that's all in shadow. I'm not going to put a lot of detail in there. And then all of this side here is in sunlight as well. And there's a shadow side here. So when you're looking at uh, what to put in and what to leave out, you're looking for um, detail in the light areas and uh, leaving out detail in the shadow areas. Correct, right. The detail in the shadow areas is gonna drop out. It drops out in photographs, it drops out in paintings. And uh, if you wanna illuminate you know, your painting is, is go ahead and uh, I'm going to put in some of these windows just to get a feel for where I'm at in the painting. And there we go. I'm going to block out some more sunlit areas. Like that. Look for the shape of the sunlit area. There's a tree right here, some uh, a little grove of trees. I'm just going to indicate where that dark is. And then I'm going to quickly just crosshatch, knowing that's going to be dark in there. Then I'll concentrate on some of these roof, roof shapes here. After you get the light areas blocked in where these sunlit areas are and the shadow side, I'm gonna go ahead and look for the darks in here. I'm gonna actually try to define these shapes a little more and start to look for dark where windows would go or are going and just indicate those not a lot of detail there. going to be a roof there. Let's see a window here.
course, if you're outside doing this, especially in Venice, um, and you're doing out on the open, sometimes there's people who come up and, you know, they're very polite. They'll watch you. And it's a great way to make meet people. Um, and most tourists and visitors of this area, they, they really like seeing people, you know, do artwork right in front of their very eyes. And um, at times I consider myself almost an ambassador to art. Uh, some people don't, you know, realize that, wow, you know, um, this is what goes into making a painting or a drawing. And um, they're very appreciative of what you do. So think of yourself as an ambassador to art when you're out painting. I know it's difficult and you get self-conscious, but that's okay. You'll get over that. Um, point is just to keep, keep sketching here and drawing. Drawing's the best thing here. I mean, this, in terms of the art here. So I got this, this church done and it's got basically the, the, the shapes that I want here. And then now I'm going to, I know this is all of this area here. I'm going to cross hatch the area where this is going to be in shadow, just to remind me that this is in shadow. So I'm going to cross hatch these shadow shapes right now. So you find the sketching to be uh, kind of a nice way to meet people and uh, get acquainted with them on location? Yeah. Um, I'm sort of an outgoing kind of person, I'm a little more extroverted, but um, I like to engage, you know, the, the, the people who are coming along, they're, they're curious, you know, and sometimes I feel my job is just it's um, letting them know how things, how things happen. How do you get, how do you make art? And then the other thing, they, they're going, what are you looking at? What, what do you see that I don't see? And um, so in that regards, it's, uh, it's an education process for yourself and for others. Now, all these windows and stuff, you could fake this in. No one's going to sit there and count these windows, right? You just want to indicate these. And same with the roofs. Um, you can't, these buildings are like, three, four blocks away. You can't count the tiles on the roof. <laughs> so don't attempt to try to put them in uh, at this stage. If they're closer and they're clay tiles, yeah, you're going to put them in. Uh, the ribs on this church here on the dome, just a few lines. It indicates the direction of those. Yeah. I remember looking at the buildings in Venice and uh, uh, wanting to sketch them and thinking, you know, how in the world to get all those windows in and, and to get them in the right places. And so it's very freeing to hear you say, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's at a distance. You just get an indication. If you, if you put in a few of these, um, like in the shadow area, I could put in a few of these in here 
and you sort of get the idea. That's it. <laughs> so now that I have, I'm looking at this and I'm looking at this profile shape here. And um, there's usually a few little chimney pots up here, here and there. Put those in. You know, as you recede in the distance, uh, less detail. That way you stay out of trouble. If I start putting all the detail over here, it'll take away from the detail that's over here. So now I'm going to take a thicker pen or a thicker nib here, and I'm going to do a profile. I'm going to look at the dark lines that I see um, starting in here at this uh, the top of this building here. So I'm just going to hit this with a little thicker pen. If you look at this pen relative to this one, you see it's a little thicker nib. Oh yeah. So now I'm gonna go back in through here and just strengthen some of these profile lines. And then where the shadows are, I'm gonna put in a little thicker line here, thicker line, and you can see it goes thinner. And then as it goes over here, it's thicker here. I just saw another area where I want to put a little grass hatching. So I'm restating some of these thicker lines here in the profile. Did you do a lot of sketching of buildings uh, outside of buildings when you were uh, in the architect field? Um, not a lot. I, um, I got away from the design studio and I started getting into project management. Ah. And so um, I found that that was where my calling was. It wasn't so much in the design area Although I, I really appreciate good design and um, I do know what it takes to create good design. Um, and I work with really talented folks. So, but my calling was to spend money, manage and spend money and pay bills. I'm so pretty like good at the managing, managing the business part too. Ask my yeah, so, so when I get into this, um, it reminds me of you know school and how much fun that was. It was a struggle. It was. I can't say that was easy. If you didn't learn how to draw, boy, you you had to you had to have some talent in drawing. Otherwise, you couldn't communicate your ideas, and uh, that was really important. But now I get to draw and do things that I like doing. This is very uh, um, my creative outlet here. This boat. So have you ever taught uh, travel sketching outdoors on location? Oh yeah, that's mostly where I do it. 
we're oh, okay. so um Italy, France, and Spain. Perfect places. Yeah. And around here as well. You know, it's um what we're learning is sort of the technique. Um no matter what it is, it's it's um you always come back to the the drawing skills to communicate this. It's so for those people that say, "Well, I don't really want to draw. I just want to get started painting." Um, you would say, "You know, back up and do the drawing, right?" Well, um, for some people, just that's called dabbling, right? Um, and I think when you want to express your ideas, sometimes it does take a little more than just doing it by accident. Uh, it's intentional. And that's where uh, it helps to try to solidify your ideas before you paint them. I, I usually, when I'm out painting, I, I could see the finished painting before I even paint it. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I know what it, what it's going to look and feel like. Um, I'll just pay attention to what's happening with the painting as I'm painting it. But I generally know what, what, I, what, what my intentions are. Whether or not I hit that mark is sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I have something in mind already about, you know, so that's how long did did we spend drawing that half hour and this is like a you know eight and a half by eleven kind of paper here so uh -huh. that's about as far as I want to take this uh, right now at this point. There's plenty there right now. I, I'll probably see some stuff later on, but um, we could do is take a little break. Um, you go ahead. I'm going to leave this up here if you want to see this. Perfect. Yeah, and then... Um, and then uh, what we want to do next is uh, get out some paints. A um, couple of brushes. I'm gonna... this over okay uh michelle yes could you see the bottom here uh-huh okay oh, where my finger is uh-huh i can see okay. the tip of your finger okay good all right um i guess my uh zoom function is blotting that i wasn't sure you could see the bottom of the painting uh-huh yeah it's good. okay good all right um i have 13 minutes after Let's take seven minutes at at uh, eight twenty. Yeah, uh, take you want to take ten? Sure. Okay, let's take ten minutes, and I'll leave this up here. Okay, that'll uh, give those of us that are sketching a little time to yeah. to catch up. And uh, if there's any questions out there too, they could chat. Yeah. So uh, feel free to. Um, Unmute and ask questions during this time. Chat with each other, whatever. I'm going to go get um, a snack. I'll be right back. OK. I have actually found when I have 
uh, sat somewhere and done a little uh, drawing or painting um, in in Europe, even though I'm not very good at it, I, I feel like people really like to uh, uh, engage and chat with me about it and maybe even about the building that I'm uh, taking it, that I'm drawing and um, who lived there. And um, they seem amazed that somebody can actually do a, a painting right before their eyes that they're pretty, um, Pretty encouraging uh, to, to chat with. It's really kind of fun. Sometimes I feel like I get more out of the interactions that I get from sitting and doing art than, than actually the success with the, the painting on location. But um, either way, it proves to be memorable. Has anybody else uh, out there painted in Venice specifically? I have not, but I've been there and I'd like to go back and paint. So feel free to hit your space bar and unmute if you'd like to comment. Looks like Nancy has uh, painted in Venice before. Nice. I seem to recall a lot of people, uh, local artists selling their paintings that they were doing on location uh, in, in Venice and other parts of Italy. I remember that being kind of fun. They would just sit there and work on it and, and sell it and move on to the next one. Seems like it might, might be a good gig, at least for a while. There's a, uh, a PBS series by a guy named David Dunlap. I don't know if they're showing it anymore, but I, I think you can find him online. But he um, he's a, a pretty good artist and he will uh, show how different artists created their artwork and, and kind of shows you their techniques and style. But he, he spends several episodes in Venice uh, and kind of demonstrating uh, Sargent's work in watercolor in Venice. And it's really fascinating uh, to, to watch him demonstrate how Sargent would have created some of his works, his watercolor works in, uh, in Venice. Oh, interesting. I'll have to yeah. check that out. Yeah, he's, it's a really was a fun, series he he you know he starts with van gogh and he he goes through all the 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 big uh classic artists and travels around the world imitating their style usually with students uh that he takes and they all play, paint on location and then he'll go over and grab their brushes and paint over their work uh it's it's kind of fun to watch but <laughs> he, he's uh, not shy about it, huh? No, no, but he's very good, and it's it's also very instructive, and it's and he also spends a lot of time talking about the artist and the history of the artist uh, before they start doing any painting or 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 um, or recreating some of their artwork. Uh, but it's a great great series. Taught me a lot about composition and and just some of the basic things that a lot of the classic artists uh, uh, learned and, and, and how they were taught uh, and how they ended up painting the way they painted.
another thing about um, David's workshop coming up, and I, I know that he hasn't touched on it with this drawing he's done, but um, a, a lot of it is is understanding perspective. Um, I, I comparing my drawing to his drawing, and and I have no perspective <laughs> in my drawing, and 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 you can see he has a lot of uh, perspective in his, but he didn't do any perspective lines. He intuitively knows how to do that, and uh, but we are going to spend uh, uh, a good amount of time uh, in the workshop uh, talking about perspective and understanding perspective. And I know in past workshops we did earlier this year with uh, Schaller when we did some cityscapes, everybody was interested in perspective. So again, if you're interested in perspective uh, in terms of your sketching, uh, it, it's a great workshop to take um, as well because of, uh, of because of what he's going to be covering uh, about perspective in the, in the workshop. Well, and if I'm remembering right, um, he really likes to put people into his pictures too. So yeah, well, I'm sure we'll be spending a lot of time on on how to how to put figures and and put them in correctly uh, into your paintings. Yeah, I think that would be valuable. Okay. How are we doing? Are we? So I see that um, you've got uh, lines in the ocean, you've got uh, lines for the buildings and nothing in the sky. Do you ever make uh, lines where you're gonna put clouds or do you just leave that for uh, the watercolor? I'm gonna leave that. Watercolor is best for that. Um, if it was just a drawing, then I would probably indicate um, the underside of the cloud you know, the shadow side of the cloud. Mm -hmm. They're really soft clouds and watercolor is pretty perfect for that. Um, kind of thing. So I'll show how to, I'm going to demonstrate how I do that. You know, these nice cloud formations there. Get rid of Okay, I think we should start in a couple of minutes. Was there anything uh, on the chat? Any questions or anything, Michelle? Or um, no, I think I uh, passed them along. Uh, I haven't seen anything since. So. Okay. All right. I, I assume that's everybody's good to go. Then. That's good. Okay. Okay. Let's do some sky. So I'm going to mix up some blue over here. Nice puddle of blue. Is that cobalt blue? A cobalt and uh, ultramarine, both. Huh. It's a mixture. So that's that. Um, Generally, I want to put my cool colors down here and some of the warmer earth tones and, and the primaries up in here, warm colors are here and cool, generally. Okay. Um, and so my brush. So I have, uh, David, I have somebody asking um, if you could give them any tricks for figuring out perspective. And I sort of have a feeling that that is a pretty big subject that you're going to go into in more detail in your workshop. But would you like to say anything about that now? Um, yeah, what I would say about perspective, um, um, go to the library if you um, and get a, a book or two on um, perspective drawing, linear perspective. 
and practice one and two point, actually copy uh, one and two point perspective samples. Just copy them. And mm -hmm. then uh, write down three sentences about what's important about one point and what's so important about two point perspective. And um, you'll need an understanding of that. It's good to have that when we're out on location or doing travel sketching, even if you're doing a chair or a table and you want to make it look like it's sitting on the ground and in perspective, um, having a working knowledge of linear perspective is very helpful for all artists. So we'll go over that, not in a lot of detail, but uh, we'll review one and two point perspective. So I'm encouraging the participants to ahead of time, um, brush up on some of the principles of one and two point perspective. Okay, on to clouds, I'm gonna go ahead and um, take clear water and randomly put that down like that. And then I'm gonna grab the blue and randomly put that in. Also, I don't know if you can see, it's probably pretty shiny, right? If I tilted it. That's better when you tilt it. it yeah, you it can see, see it a little better there. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go right into the buildings up in through here. I'm gonna take a little paper towel. I think I'm gonna to have to strengthen this. This doesn't. The camera is sort of washing these things out. Let me let me dial down the uh, intensity on the the light here. There we go. That's better. Is that better? A little better, huh? So if I want to save some of these cloud shapes, just blot this out a little. And then with that same blue, I'm going to add a little burnt sienna in here and make a warm gray put under here. David, somebody would like you to talk a little bit more about um, your use of the post-its and your travel notes. Yeah, I'm going to, the post-its here is a placeholder for my notes and I'm not going to paint over it. So I put a post-it here. I'm going to paint right up to it and I'll leave a little white area of the paper I'm going to draw on or, or write something on. Okay. Yeah. Um. So got that. I'm thinking roofs right now. So I'm going to burn sienna and a little ochre. We'll go a little problem. Let's take this.
This is yellow ochre. I'm going to add a little pink to it. A little rose color. So you tend to paint kind of uh, loosely and rapidly when you're doing. Yeah, the, this is a wash. Okay. These are light washes. My rule of thumb is 50-50. Um, it's 50% of the time you're drawing and 50% of the time you're painting. Okay, I like that, yeah. yeah. For these sketches, you know, that it's going to Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put some water down. So I have some of this cobalt. I'll use cobalt turquoise and a little. Uh, Cobalt blue. Warm it up with a little uh, um, little gold color. Make it a little lighter green. Strengthen it just a little down here. There we go. Does anybody know if Italy's back open for travel now? This, I'm going to start putting in these shadows. I mixed up a little cool gray. And what uh, colors do you like to mix to get your gray? Um, 
you, the blue and uh, burnt sienna. Okay. Do you ever just use Payne's gray? Uh, no, I, no, I haven't. Not your favorite. I've used it before. I'm gonna go ahead and strengthen that. Okay. Hey, uh, Eileen says um, she's heard that Europe is accepting visitors from the USA now, so that's kind of encouraging. Okay. And then um, Leslie would like to know what size is your paper uh, and how does your process on the sketch differ from producing a painting uh, of the subject matter? Um, let's see, let me think about it. So the paper size, this one is a, a sketchbook that is, oh God, if I, the A size, I wanna, let me get a hold on a sec. This is eight. Eight and a quarter by eleven and a half. Um, and in terms of how does this differ in my process? Um, it's quicker, um, and I'm not, I'm not painting so much here I, as I am. The similarities are um, I'm looking for shapes still um, and painting some shapes. Shadow shapes, for example, um, I'm looking for those. Um, um, and I do that when I'm painting as well. So that's the same. Now, um, when you do a painting, do you also use uh, pen and ink or, or no? No. I just I I take a a pencil and then just block out where things go, not what they are. What where, where do they go? Yeah. The, yeah. The, the sketches is really about the you know expressing it with line and with immediacy. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it's. A sketch. It's not, you know, an involved painting here. There. All oh, this side over here is cooler. I think we're doing good here. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Coming right along. Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the good thing about this is I could always come back in here later and add more lines if I feel like it. But at this point, I just want to, you know, when you're out travel sketching, it's um, best to just leave it alone and let the, you know, be spontaneous about it. When I paint from a photograph, it's, it's, a, it's a lot different. I'm actually looking at the photograph a lot more and, and um, you know, especially the shadow shapes. I'm not trying to invent them as I would when I'm out in the, uh, in plain air. Hmm. So, uh, I'm starting to get picky. <laughs> so let me see if it, is it better when I tilt it like that? Let's see, yeah. Go put it back the other way. Yeah, it is better when you tilt it. When, when I did that. It gets a lot darker. I don't know, somewhere in between. You don't have to tilt it a lot, just a little bit maybe. Okay, let me turn this light down here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, see it. The so, clouds are a little uh, more pronounced. There. Oh yeah, you got a little, lot more blue in the sky than what we could see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this is a really good question here uh, on our chat. When on location, can you explain any other materials you would bring? Do you bring a folding chair and a little table or anything like that? Um. I usually find, um, I don't bring chairs along. There's usually a place I could just sit. Um, if it's by, you know, or a little stool, maybe. I have uh, a small little travel school stool that I sometimes take. Um, but it's all about, you know, the weight of something <laughs> when you have to yeah. carry around all day long. So do you tend to keep your things in a backpack or some kind uh, of a carrying case or what? Yeah, a little carrying case. I'll show you what that looks like. Let's see. Something like this. Oh yeah, that's pretty small. Mm -hmm. It'll fit, it actually fits this size sketchbook inside of it. I could put the sketchbook, all of my painting supplies, and um, it's about the size of a eight and a half by 11. It's like the size of a piece of paper. Nice. And this is it. This is a go bag for two weeks if you want it. You know. yeah. I'm impressed. So it always my... pays to pack light. Of course, my husband's been trying to convince me of that for a long time, but the more I go, the more I find that's true. <laughs> and your palette goes in that little uh, pouch as well. Say again, the... the your palette, does it go in oh, the yeah, yeah. carrying pouch too? I bring this, this size palette. Oh, wow, yeah. tubes. Yeah. I fill this up before I go. Um, let it dry out a little bit. Um, filling this up, you're good for two weeks. That's two weeks worth of paint right there. Easy. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Because you're doing these light, you know, washes. And um, so you're not do using a lot of thick paint. So um, you would leave your tubes of paint at home and you just fill that up before you go? And Yeah, and um, like I say, if I go to an art store, I'm going to stop by. And if I need a tube of paint, um, then I'll just go ahead and buy a small one or something. 
but generally you fill this up with your favorite colors and it's good to go. I'm good to go. Um, um, we'll talk a little more about the kind of colors you use in certain, like if you're in the tropics, you want certain colors. And I think if you're in the Northern hemisphere, you're looking at, you know, some basic colors and oh, a little okay. more earth tones. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. So have you uh, painted all over the world, all, all different continents? No, not everyone. I'm, that's, that's, I got some bucket list things, you know, to, do, but um, that'll come in due time. So let's see. I I'm at a point right now. I need for a sketch. I'm done. You know, I'm not gonna. You could keep noodling, but it's not gonna, in my opinion, gonna make this any better. Um, so. So a couple here. more questions here. Uh, somebody asks who makes the little palette that you're showing there. Oh, uh, you have to go to the workshop to find that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the other question for you. Um, no, it's, uh, there's a couple of brands. Um, one's called Whiskey Painters. Like whiskey, like you're drinking whiskey. Uh-huh. Um, and does it does it does it come with a bottle of whiskey? It doesn't come with a bottle of whiskey, but it's I don't know how they came up with that name, but it's whiskey painters. Okay. And they came up with this. So it, it does have a little thumb ring on the back, like if you want to hold it. Oh, oh, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. And, um, you know, a little mixing area. And uh, if you use a, a water brush like this. Let's see. Well, let's see if you can see it. There you go. See, it's got water in it. It's you got your water. Actually, you don't need to bring a water container if you got this. Oh, because yeah. yeah, somebody else is asking how you manage your your water. Yeah, this is how you can manage it this way, or use this. <laughs> you got to bring a little, uh, you know, a little bottle. Like a bottle of water or something, mm -hmm. and then you just you bring a little container so that yeah. you can put some in. I've been known to use coffee before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that makes an interesting sort of an old world uh -huh. patina, right? <laughs> coffee will get you somewhere these days. You know, it's it's okay. Yeah. I need coffee to get started too, but for different reasons. <laughs> yeah, we go. okay. Um, That's fun. If, People want to go on a gallery view and you could talk about, you can see, I, I've, I'm sort of, thanks CWA for the opportunity to do this demo, demo of Venice. That's what I wrote here. Okay, yeah. And, and, you know, just put the date down, 6-16-21. If anybody's uh, interested, uh, Escher Arts, E-T-C-H-E-R, uh, they, they make a lot of stuff for journaling, journaling folks, and they have a lot of compact palettes, both metal and ceramic. They make some really high quality uh, sketchbooks that are all 100% cotton paper. Mm -hmm. um, I think they use artistic, Artistico, Fab, Fabriano Artistico. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they've got all sorts of other uh, fun uh, sketching supplies, you know, uh, travel, travel uh, uh, brushes and that sort of thing. Um, and then there's another company called, I think it's Adventure Expeditions. I'll, I'll try to send it out in an email to everybody, but they, they actually make kits uh, like you showed. Uh, they, they got the whole bag and everything and it comes equipped with small pallets and a water brush and, mm -hmm. and uh, different uh, supplies. Uh, it's a little pricey, but they're they're great for traveling. If you if you if you just want to buy a kit that's already ready to go, mm -hmm. um, they they've got some fun stuff as well. Mm -hmm. I like uh, the buying these uh, empty because then I could use my two paints in them. I prefer the two paints. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and there's there's are all empty. Uh, uh, they have some featured artists. Uh, Escher has some featured artists 
and they'll sell them with uh, pans or or hand hand filled uh, mm -hmm. uh, pallets from their pallet, and uh, but most for the most part they're empty. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm echoing one of the comments here in the chat. That is, thank you. This was very enjoyable. You're welcome. I like doing this. This is fun. Well, thank you so much for coming and uh, taking us on a little trip to Venice here vicariously tonight. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And we look and forward to seeing you at the workshop, David. Oh, it, and uh, what are the dates again? Uh, well, let me think now, July 17th and 18th. And um, it's a weekend. So if you've always had, I'm sorry, 18th and 19th. So it, it's a Saturday, Sunday. Uh, they're not our normal nine to four workshop. I think we are going from 10 till three, uh, six hour workshops. Uh, so a little less uh, uh, time crunch. And um, uh, and again, if, if weekends are a problem for you or, or weekdays are a problem for you in terms of workshops, this is a perfect workshop uh, uh, because it will all be on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. And we, we signed up one more person. So we're down to three spots. So, uh, if you're uh, if you really want to get in on this, uh, make sure you, you 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 jump on it pretty soon. All right. Yes, indeed. Um, I want to remind people that um, you should be getting a survey in the next few days in your email. If you don't receive it, uh, either uh, first look in your um, junk mail because we've had people finding them things in there from the CWA lately. Um, and uh, send me an email and let me know uh, so I can um, get it to you because uh, we really want to get your input. And I promise you it's a, it, it's a rather brief survey. So um, don't worry about it be, being too much of a commitment. Um, anybody else want to share anything? You want to, and anybody want to turn on their uh, video and we can show your painting if you paint it along. Show yours, Michelle. Well, uh, mine is, mine is not done. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just halfway done here, I guess. So. Uh, oh, nice. I didn't Mine's do done. the water yet. <laughs> Mine's but, done. Yay. Joe, you want you want to show? Yeah. Nice plan. Got to turn on your video first. Oh God, you think I'd know that? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there it is. You spotlight. Okay, there. Nice. Nice. Thanks. That's with no perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I'll show mine. Okay. I can. Can I can I spotlight myself? <laughs> I think so, but I don't know for sure. Bernie, go ahead and put it up by your face. Put it up by my face. Yeah. I I put it in see. the camera there. One sec, one sec, one sec. I'm still a novice to this thing. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Hold it up. There we oh, go. All right. Now we're talking. Oh, nice. All right. Oh, nice. What does it say in the corner? Venice. Oh, nice. It is, nice. Uh, I think, I think Bernie's an old architect as well. I used to work for David. Yeah, yeah, I knew. <laughs> yeah, but you also taught ED6 too, didn't you? Yeah, I did. All right. All right. <laughs> I hate you, art architects. Oh. Well, David. Did you learn perspective from me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. I'm closing out. I got my feet wet. No. <laughs> I'm, Don't I'm use looking, a barrel pen. I'm looking forward to the workshop, David. Oh, cool. Okay. That, see you welcome aboard. You got it.
Nice All going. right, Pat, there's yours. Right. Very nice. Hey. Don't, don't use this pen. It leaks. Feral. <laughs> Junior over there. Permanent marker. <laughs> That's nice. all you need is when you're when you're traveling is a pen that leaks, huh? Karen, hold yours up hold right. higher. There we go. Hey Judy. Oh beautiful. I oh, love it. Wow. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Wow. Hey. All righty. Wow. wow. Salute. Another architect? Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> oh, <there. laughs> gosh. I, I hate They're coming out of the woodwork. Yep. Wow. Another one. Ooh. Oh, glass. Wow. wow. Beautiful. The water looks so glassy that, there. Hey, Glenn, Glenn, your stuff is looking good, man. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, another Barbara. architect. Very nice. Yeah, I tell you, these architects. Dang. Ooh. Okay. Hey, Barbara's got one. Nice. Nice. Nice water, too. Thank you. Hey, nice. Great. Anyone else? We made it look easy, right? <laughs> you did. <laughs> That's the whole Holy point. Smoke. <laughs> Thank you, David. Okay. Well, the, the Thank you, David. See you in July. Okay. Okie dokie. <laughs> Thanks, David. Thank you. Thanks so much, David, for being with us tonight. We okay, really enjoyed Michelle. it. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Checks in the mail. Okay. Copy that. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Michelle. Good night, everybody. Yes. Hey, Michelle, say hello to uh, Sue when you see her next time, Johnston. Yeah, I sure will. Yeah. You bet. Yeah, you guys are neighbors or at least in the same state, right? Yeah, we're about an hour and a half apart. Oh, okay. Uh, but we have gotten together and painted once. And, all right. Uh, hope to you do can it meet again. halfway. Meet yeah. halfway. It's all good. It sure is. It's beautiful here. Oh, wow. And she's going to be demoing in August for us. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we go back a long ways. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I know mm -hmm. she was the past president of the CWA. Were you okay. on the yep. board with her? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. I was over at Iretta's, and she just got her paintings for the show. Oh, okay. Nice. Oh, nice. I'm going to sign off.